Victims coming out. Victims coming out. Police are confirming two down at this point. Two down. The number of casualties quickly rising. Four down. We now know the number to be five killed, all of them journalists, at least two more injured. Heard a loud noise, like an incredibly loud bang. I saw a guy holding a gun. Uh, the door of the Capitol Gazette had been blown to pieces. Several shots have been fired. Uh, possible uh, shotgun. At least 10 shots heard. Tragedy hitting home for this local newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland. The Capitol Gazette, early this afternoon, finding themselves at the center of a national story. An active shooter situation unfolding inside the newsroom. He entered the building with a shotgun and he looked for his victims as he walked through the lower level. All units limit your transmissions. Do we have any kind of intel on our shooter? Fight my own with a ponytail. In about 60 seconds, authorities responding, running inside, and engaging the suspected shooter. Minutes later, the suspect, who police say used a shotgun to carry out his assault, was surrounded by officers and taken into custody. The shooter is in custody and being interrogated at this time. The suspected shooter has been identified as 38-year-old Jared Ramos, who may have had a long-running feud with the paper, having sued the paper in 2012 after it reported that he pled guilty to criminal harassment. The newspaper won the case, reporting on what was already public record. Mass shooters are what typically are called revenge collectors. They, in other words, their revenge builds up, and it can be as simple as an editorial that might have been written or a lawsuit they have lost. The triggering mechanisms for violence tend to be, in, in, in these types of cases, tend to be build, they build up over a period of, of weeks or even months and possibly years. Heavily armed police working to get people out safely. About 170 people evacuated, hands in the air, to a reunification center at a nearby mall. We're doing everything we can to get people out safe and uh, we're trying to, to, to minimize the casualties. The scene unfolded right behind me here, and just take a look. Hours later, the scene is still very much active. Police using dogs to search for explosives or possible accomplices. Authorities even say they found a canister of smoke grenades. This is what we trained for. A week ago, we practiced an active uh, shooter training uh, thing. We did not expect something like this to happen in our community, but we were ready, and I don't think we could have put any more resources if you look behind you at what's been done here. Afterwards, eyewitnesses sharing harrowing stories about what happened inside that building. Police came through knocking on our door, grabbing the door, and then checking to make sure we are okay. And the next thing you know, he's like, you need to get out. And then we had to leave out the building with our hands up behind the building beside us. Describing the alleged gunman's movements. Guy was holding what looked like a big shotgun and, and moving uh, across the entrance of the Capitol Gazette office, pointing the gun deeper into the office like he was uh, targeting people. Newspaper reporter Phil Davis was inside the newsroom writing on Twitter, gunmen shot through the glass door to the office and opened fire on multiple employees. Can't say much more and don't want to declare anyone dead, but it's bad. In another tweet, there is nothing more terrifying than hearing multiple people get shot while you're under your desk and then hear the gunman reload. Amidst the chaos, the Capitol Gazette steadfast in its mission to report the truth, keeping the website updated with articles interviewing reporters who were inside Side, one describing the scene as a war zone. An employee saying, I'm a police reporter. I write about this stuff. But as much as I'm going to try to articulate how traumatizing it is to be hiding under your desk, you don't know until you're there and you feel helpless. The sort of general level of animosity against the media and secondarily maybe even law enforcement in recent years is very troubling to me because people who are on the edge of doing something will use the discontent of others to sort of motivate and, and sort of rationalize their act of attack. The president tweeting with the familiar, my thoughts and prayers are with the victims and their families. Thank you to all of the first responders who are currently on the scene. Officials say the suspected shooter was apprehended with no wallet and no identification. What's that process like to identify someone who doesn't have an ID and, and they just do something like this? When you have 
no ID on a suspect, no wallet initially. That is a hurdle that police have to get over. But with all the different means that they have of using photographs, surveillance videos, talking to witnesses, it turns out the suspect may have had some kind of ongoing feud with the paper. Uh, it, it gets done. So the early reports right now are that perhaps this was very targeted to this specific paper. Exactly. And again, the police describe this as a classic hometown paper, one that they do business with all the time to get information out to the community. Just a tragic loss for everyone involved. And tonight, authorities are searching his Maryland residence for further information. Because you have a shooter that's alive, that means you have to prosecute him. And if you have to prosecute him, you really have to know the tick-tock of what led him to this shooting, the weapon, other potential people involved, and what took him up to the door of the Capitol Gazette today. This attack marks the 154th mass shooting this year. That is a shooting with at least four fatal or non-fatal injuries, part of a seemingly endless cycle of violence that shows no signs of slowing down. And tonight, we learn the names of the victims. First victim's name is Wendy Winters. Second victim is Rebecca Smith. Third victim is Robert Hyacin. Fourth victim is Gerald Feshman. And the fifth victim is John McNamara. The Baltimore Sun reporting that Rob Hyacin was an editor for the Gazette and the father of three. He had just celebrated his 33rd wedding anniversary. Hours ago, the paper's editor, Jimmy DeButts, with a series of defiant tweets about the heart of the humble newspaper, devastated and heartbroken, numb. The reporters and editors put their all into finding the truth. That is our mission, will always be. And tomorrow, there will be a print edition. For Nightline, I'm Gio Benitez in Annapolis, Maryland. Gio will be live on Good Morning America tomorrow with the latest details from the shooting. And to our peers at the Gazette, we're with you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.